But if you got a top five and you can't mention my shit, oh, because you on IG. Oh, because they Come on, bro. Stop acting like we ain't doing this shit legendary. The package is in the air. Azariah Malone Cartagena is in the air. About to land safely. God bless. Inshallah. El Boogie Lorena is in the air package about to land. Uh, shout out my man Mason. Uh, stylist. He do his thing. He just hit me up right quick, you know. Um, Today is Wild Cherry Friday. Wild Cherry Pepsi Friday. What a big week we had. We started with Milano. Uh, we went to Ebro, we went to Uncle Murder, we went to Lee Daniels, uh, and just, you know, the show's about you, the show's about giving you something to get your mind off of the depression and the stress, especially this COVID, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs, a lot of people uh, are in a dark place, and, and so uh, somebody like Fat Joe, who you've been able to enjoy my music for many, many years as an artist, is able to talk to you and relate to you. Um, it's just a simple, regular human being and, 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 and telling you my flaws and my failures. Uh, and so, um, and so, you know, I come on here and I rock with y'all and, and if I help you get by today, I'm, thank God, because uh, you guys helped me get by through the day. And, uh, you know, the one thing I never noticed in COVID is they starting to have fans back in the stadium. So they hit me up with, like, the best tickets in the world, Miami Heat, first game back. And I was like, yeah, bet. I'll go to the game. And then I was like, oh, no, I got to do the show. And the same shit be happening when it's time to go uh, eat uh, dinner and the people want to go 8 o'clock. I can't go. And so I got a real job here, guys. Shout out Fan Mio, F A N M I O, uh, making this all possible. You can connect one on one with your favorite artist. Um, so the thing I always talk about uh, about journalists and hip hop journalists jamming people up and 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 you know why we don't do that. Uh, why we don't do that. And, and, you know, we make everybody happy uh, and we don't jam nobody up and, and, we, and we deal with respect. You know, sh shit, you know, Ebro's one of those guys, Ebro. He'll jam you up. He, he's into the clickbait. He knows how to do it. And so he spun me with a veteran move one-on-one. -on -one. We had the most politest, beautiful interview in the world. And then... Uh, he turns around and he talks tough. Yo, Camilla, what's up, my brother? And so, um, I am the nicest, beautiful guy in the world. But if you try to, like, press me or something, I'm going to react. And so I fell for it. And I start talking to White Van Talk. And, uh, and so it got a little fake heated because I got nothing but love and respect for Ebro. I have no problems with him. And so today uh, I had a little time and I was surfing YouTube and then I see Ebro gives his response about being on the big, big show. And his response in, in, in the clickbait, it says white van talk. Uh, Joe goes at it with, you know, and that's that shit. You know, so if I was control, in control of that headline, I'd be like, you know, Fat Joe interviews Ebro. It wouldn't be white van talk. Oh, uh, where, where's this beef going to go? And, and and so that's the shit they be doing. Not just him. He's not the only one guilty of that. Uh, all these hip-hop journalists do that to artists. And somebody came on my platform and spun it around. And it still turned into some jock, shock jock shit. Now, let's be clear. Uh, I watched it. Shout out to Laura Styles who I've only had nothing but respect for 
since I met you in my life. Uh, Cass, one who I love dearly. Uh, Rosenberg, who I love dearly. Um, and so they having this talk about me and, uh, and, and I'm like, this is pretty crazy, right? But Ebro admits that he's, he, he did not want to tell me that the big show is the biggest show in the game. And so now if you, if you watching this for the first time and you didn't see the big show or nothing like that, you might think Fat Joe's, which I am very confident, egotistical, and so the thing is, everything we do in life, uh, this industry has found a way to diminish it. And we've been doing some pretty amazing things. You know, I, I watch uh, documentaries and things and people who talk about somebody who discovered somebody and the whole shit is like, wow, they discovered such and such. And oh, and he's, he's, he's an incredible... Uh, executive or this guy should be the president of this and this guy should be and then when I sit down yo Nori you need to yeah and when and, and when I and, and, and when I think about me and I think about all the guys I've discovered you know and the, they became monsters like you know legends living legends like, oh you, you know they forgot about me then maybe right and so uh and, and, and so I've learned to speak my greatness into existence. And so it's not so much egotistical. It's really more or less, if I don't say it, shout out to Ghana, Africa. If I don't say it, nobody else is going to say it. And it's pretty amazing that I've been able to do a show for 11 months straight with no politics behind me, nobody behind me pushing or no... TV channel or radio station. So you got to understand, a lot of these guys, yeah, Nori, stop fucking with me. Stop fucking with me, Nori. Uh, a lot of these guys, this is my brother Nori, boy. He's something else. A lot of these guys, you know, they 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 are a big radio station. They are syndicated. And, and artists like me want to get our music played up there. And so because we want to get our music played on all these radio stations, we have to sit down and talk to these guys. That's not what's happening here. What's happening here is artists and people coming up their free will out of respect and love and come on here just to talk to you guys and show love and show love to Fat Joe. It's a different type of uh, animal that's going on out here. And even my brother Nori who's on here, who's one of my best friends ever created, uh, like really my brother, and y'all know that, um, when I first started, um, Nori was like, yo, you got to do this like once a week or once a month. You can't do this every day, Joe. This, it's, it's impossible that you're going to have big stars on here every day and you're going to keep this shit going. You're going to run out. And even my brother learned, um, that that wasn't true. And so with me, I, I, I dream big and I'm pretty, uh, I am Benny Siegel. I'm the guy who would go and do Vegas in the middle of the desert. If I had the money to do it, I would do it. I dream big and I'm not uh, scared money. I've been broke a million times. I've slept on the floor. My mother doesn't like that I say this. Um... But I've been broke. I've slept on the floor. Uh, thank you, Camillo. I know you've been playing Sunshine, man. You, Camillo, you are one of the greatest human beings on earth. You are my brother. And I love you and your family. Blend on the water. The stay, everything you do, I admire you uh, for not being political in hip-hop. For just... Loving the culture, loving the music as it comes. Camilla, you are a unique person. That is a fact. And so when I scream the big, big show is number one, it's because nobody's going to say the big, big show is number one. Right? So I rap. I'm too black for some Latinos. I just keep it real. I'm like a mutt. 
Fat Joe is too black for some Latinos. So the first time I went to Puerto Rico, the first time in my life, sold out show, whatever. And y'all know me in America for the first artist to ever have hip hop in the Puerto Rican parade. You know, we've been repping this Puerto Rican shit to the moon. Right, me, the pun, and doing it, and the other, me sweat that, right? So when I get to Puerto Rico, I'm thinking it's this big, like, oh my God, the Messiah is coming home. And so, but it pretty was, it was. It's the light, but I know. And, but when I go to the radio station, and the first question they ask me in Spanish is, mira, tú te crees que tú eres negro? Meaning, you think you black in Puerto Rico radio. That's the first Thing ever told to me on Puerto Rico radio. And obviously they didn't leave the island because I've been repping this Puerto Rico shit to death. I've been repping this body shit to death, right? So now, uh, and same things. You know, I've had records back in the days that, you know, I've gotten on the phone with my radio guy and and some radio stations in Memphis, Tennessee, and and down there in the, in the Southern Belt. This is before Fat Joe really blew up. They were like, you know, it ain't no Puerto Ricans over here. We can't really play his shit like that. So I might have been too black for Latinos and too Spanish for some black people. So I have always been a mutt. And so now I don't know what to call this show. Because obviously, daily... It's on live, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a podcast, or it's a vidcast, or I don't know. And so when I go, uh, and I see this, oh, the podcast of the year. I, mean, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, bro, because I'm not delusional. I know the type of artists, the type of conversations we've been having here, the type of shit we've been doing on here. Oh, we up there. But if you got a top five and you can't mention my shit, oh, because you on IG. Oh, because they Come on, bro. Stop acting like we ain't doing this shit legendary. Don't lie to yourself, man. Don't, they, you know, joke or moan. We don't know if it's joke or we don't know if it's the bitch. You know what the fuck this is, man. Biggest artists in the world, biggest politicians, biggest Dr. Fauci's, biggest in the world come on this shit every night. Lee Daniels, who just did uh, the, the, the Butler Empire, this damn, the young girl Mulata. I mean, they, 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 don't be act like you don't know what the fuck this shit is. So, I learned that from Kanye West. You might call him crazy. You might call But I learned if you don't talk about your shit yourself, they won't big you up. Y'all. Joe Joey King. Joey Crack. Is you in Miami or is you in a club in New York that looks like Miami? I'm in a crib. Yo, shout out to my man, Luis Guzman Pachanga. So you up top with the palm trees. I had to. It's too cold up here. We got to bring the weather up here. Yo, bro. My wife is up there. Yo, Louis Guzman, love you, my brother. Yo, my wife, she said that shit like below zero. <laughs> like, what, what's the weather like? Kenny Smith, what's up, my brother? Where, where the real meets the realest. Yo, Kenny Smith, play by play. So I'm saying, yo, Spin King. You ever felt like you've been killing the clubs and tearing the shit down legendary and you're a young guy who puts out hit records to go platinum and all that and they still try to act like they don't see what you do? 100%. That happens today. <laughs> but that's the motivation you told me that keeps you going, though. It is. That's why I get spicy and start talking that shit because, you know, I like to, I, I like to drill it on these guys, you know what I'm saying? I learned that from Kanye West. If you don't talk your shit, if you don't big yourself up, then nobody's going to big it up, big you up. They're not going to big you up. No. They don't want to see you. My brother, where you from? Where you? They want to see you doing good, but not better than them. That's always going to be how it's going to be. 
Hey, I got a better line like that. My brother Dre tells me all the time, they want to see you doing good. They don't want you living next door. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't want you living next door. They want you doing good. They love you. They want to see you do good. They don't want you living next door. They definitely don't. And, and, uh, and so where are your parents from originally? They're from Guyana, South America. Wow, they from they from Guyana. So Guyana is South American, kind of like Caribbean, because everybody. Yeah, it's like it's like um, Jamaica, Trinidad. It's West Indian. Oh, it's West Indian. Yeah, yeah, because all the Guyanians. Shout out my brother Illa, the producer. They look almost like uh Jamaican, Trinidadian. Yeah. You know that. It's all the same umbrella. It's like. I know they don't like hearing this, but it's like Puerto Rican, Dominican, Colombian. I know y'all don't like hearing I like that. hearing it. I don't give a fuck. My godfather but it was Dominican. I'm Cuban and Puerto Rican. I don't care, man. You know, these people with these stereotypes break it down. I just feel like the whole Caribbean is just one big family. That's a fact. You know? And so how you been keeping busy? I know how you been keeping busy, but it's a way to talk. How you been keeping bu busy during the COVID? Um... A lot of content, a lot of, you know, during the times when it first started, had to go live from Instagram, had to turn the crib into a club because there was no clubs. But then as, as things started opening up, started traveling, you know, Miami, Atlanta, Orlando, PA, I'm going, when they call it, I'm going. That's how we're going to do this. Yeah, because you always get to the bag, Spin King. Like, you you are not a lazy person. I've, whether it's open or it's not, I always see you working. And that's what you take. Sometimes... We don't really want to work, and yeah. but we still got to You got to work. You got to put like, in the work. This week, I told Star Monday through Friday, I want to stay home. I've been in my bed watching movies because last week we did Orlando, Atlanta, Miami, and then the week before that was Atlanta, West Palm Beach, and Miami when I saw you, and then it just been on the road, so I had to take some time. Let me ask you a question. So you're wearing a, a, a face mask this whole time, or are you pressing I your luck? Be honest with me. I have to. Only time I don't wear it is when I'm in the booth and I'm talking on the mic because I can't. But I sanitize the mic, the, the equipment, all that stuff. You have to. And so without me being a snitch, right, and not being specific, uh, this is a pandemic that hasn't happened for like 100 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so none of us expected this, right? But people still got to work. People got to have a good time. I, re I, I, I look at these times... Almost like when we see movies of Lucky Luciano and Al Capone when liquor was illegal and they were selling liquor. So there's a big thing going on with underground strip clubs in places where clubs aren't supposed to be open. Uh -huh. Correct? Correct. And so, and, and what's that like? That's just, that's just people with the fever. They, they, they got to go to these clubs. They got to... So. Some people can't stay home. Like, I'm not taking those. I can't do that because I'm going to be honest. The moment I land and the moment I touch down somewhere else, my mom, I got to send her a COVID PCR test within two days. I got to send it everywhere I go because my brother star got a niece. My parents, I'll be around them. So I can't take those risks. So I, my nose is messed up from all these. I took like 30 tests in the past 15 days just traveling because I have to. Your nose is messed up? Like, I ain't going to lie to you. My wife and my daughter been in New York. They, they, they touched down at 930 here. I got the man here to give him the test. Uh -huh. He'd give me the test while he's here, too, but we got to be careful. Tomorrow, I might go to my mother and father's house. Yeah. I can't give him no shit. Nice. And so, but, so I'm watching this shit off the hook in New York. And without saying no names, because a lot of friends of mine are in there working, paying their bills. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to heat them up. But uh, so, what is that like? They just rent the basement and just go in there and play music and sell drink. Like, what is it like? I haven't been to none of them, so I really wouldn't know. I can't do them. Star won't let me do them. Star's a good man. He's a smart man. <laughs> like, that's, that's why. That's why I've been out of town. Cause I'm going where it's legal. Atlanta's open. Texas is open. Orlando's open. Following the guidelines and you know what I'm saying. So just a mask and all that, but. I'm out of town with it. That's why when I saw you... Camillo's, Camillo's heavy on the comments saying, guys, don't say no names. Look, don't say no names. Look, look. And, and that's my brother, the mentor, who gave me a lot of advice growing up in the game, who's always a phone call away. Salute to Camillo because 
like when outside was open between me, Camillo, and a few other guys, nobody was doing as much parties as we were a month. So to go from that to home, nothing. I used to call. I can my tell you something like, about both of y'all, right? Camillo to me has the biggest following as a DJ in the clubs in New York City. Period. I'm, I'm, I'm just my opinion. Don't kill me, Spin. No. Um, and here's where you come into play. And don't kill me, Camillo, and everybody else. I don't think nobody rocks a party better than Spin King. It's just, it's just, it's just my opinion. When I've been in the club with you and watched you tear a fucking hole out the roof, and we don't really talk about you like that. You know, we said because you're the little guy, you nice to everybody, but. I've watched you rip down some fucking spots that I'm like, I, I, I walk away and I'll say, yo, this guy got to be the best. Like when, when, I, when I walk away, at least as a New York club DJ, I've seen you destroy places. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's your answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who, who influenced you to, to, to you know, for uh, your style of DJ in the plan? Uh... Camillo, Self, Enough, um, big up to Yanni and R.P. Spinbad. Those are like the guys who really influenced me to, like, I took a little bit from each one of them mm. and made it into my own person. Because mm, Camillo got, you know, like, I go big, 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 big. He go Dominican, 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 Dominican. Like one he thing turned the fuck up. Camillo thing, turned the fuck I up. I don't care what DJ it is. He's the... He started that traveling, that going here, going there, mixing the hip hop with the Latin and making the Spanish feel black, making the black feel Spanish. He made that. And I'm just. Nah, this guy. I, I yeah. bumped into Camillo in Germany, places I wouldn't even believe he would go. And so he opened, he opened a door that wasn't open and allowed me to come into it. And then I ran with it and took some stuff from Self, some stuff from Enough, some stuff from Envy, some stuff from Yanni, some stuff from. My name came from Spinbad. Spin King came from Spinbad. People just don't know. Wow. Him. That's what we call a joke for moments. So your name came from Spin Bad. You the spinoff, Spin King. Man, let me ask you something. There's a, cause, cause I don't know exactly what you do or what your business is, mm -hmm. but you, you always seem rich to me. You always seem like you got a lot of money. You nah. come in my store, you spend two, 3,000 like it's nothing. You, you, you don't look like you have a money issue. Like, I'm um, just being, so look, I'm being so, honest with you. All right, so look, so right before I was born, my parents and my two brothers and 10 of my family members lived in a one bedroom in university on Fordham in New York. Then they moved to the Bronx. That's when I was born. So my parent, my mom just retired last year. She worked at a bank. My dad works for a firm. My dad still works. I don't, we don't come from money, all that oil money talk and all that's not what this is. What we grew up was hard work and dedication and school will get you where you want to go. My dad was very hard on us about school. So my both my brothers graduated from college. I started off young on tour, so it was hard for me to go to college. So I tried online school and didn't really work out, but I knew I had to make it to make my parents proud. So hard work, dedication, and just keeping your foot on the gas. So all that, we came from money and we got, no, we got money because my parents told us, make investments, do what you gotta do and stay relevant. That way you keep afloat. So if you got 100,000 in the bank, that don't mean go spend 50,000. You don't have a hundred thousand in the bank, so you have five hundred thousand in the bank. That's how you gotta look at things. That's how we we was told. Well, wow. Let me let me tell you something. I never heard you came from oil money, and that wasn't what I was alluding to. What I was alluding to is you, you stay fly. And, and <laughs> not because there's I don't a lot know of people faking there, it to you. There's a lot of people out there that think we came from money, and I'd just be like, where where did I come from? Nah, um, you know, uh. The, the reason why I asked you is, you know, you always look like like money, which is not a bad thing. I'm, 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 I do the same shit. And it's like, um, which is a great thing. And you being a DJ and a DJ being cool with everybody, what's it like being so close to 50 Cent? What is your exact relationship with 50 Cent? Because y'all like, together all the time, best friends, family. And did, did you ever get entangled with like any of his beefs and somebody who's mad at 50 Cent wanted to look at you with a ice grill or something like that? Nah, so my relationship with 50 is 
as you know, but people don't. That's really like my brother. Like it started off as, like, I met him in the office doing an interview. From there, I I didn't even get to do the interview. I ended up in his office for seven hours, and then we became family after that. Um, he always tells me his beef has nothing to do with me. That street shit. He want me. He don't want me to do nothing with the streets. Do my work. Go be the superstar I'm supposed to be, and do that. If I see them in the club, that's not my issue. That's his issue, and he'll deal with it when he got to deal with it. Other than that. That's none of my business. That's how he tells me to look at it. And when you work these strip clubs, right, mm -hmm. uh, same thing happened to me. So when I had beef for 50 Cent, uh, you know, I discovered one of my best friends is Eve Rivera. Mm -hmm. And so after Eve started shooting videos for me, he was contacted by 50 Cent. And because he liked Fat Joe videos that you, when we at war, and so... So he tells me, yo, what, what should I do? And I'm like, yo, bro, that boy got a lot of money. You got to go over there and do some videos. And now they're brothers. And he mm -hmm. was part of the reason to bring us together as peace. And I don't believe we should stop nobody's bag. If we got personal beefs or whatever, that's we why, should let our friends get money. That's why y'all have similarities. Exactly what you just said. One day, I was supposed to be with somebody. I'm not going to say no names in the club. I said, bro, do you mind? He said, I will never stop your bag. Those exact words is what he said to me. I would never stop your back. And that's the best thing, man, because we, 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 we're only as powerful. I try to tell the people this, right, because the people come watch this show every day, and I try to give them, I try to be as transparent as ever. But you're only as good as the strength of all your people. So we want all of our people to win so that we could be strong in every category. You know, uh, without saying no names. Uh, three weeks ago, a good friend of mine, actually a brother of mine, his wife got sick. She was in the hospital out here and they wasn't treating her like she was supposed to be treated. He gives me the call. I call my man who's the president of the hospital. In two minutes, she got a private room. They on her, checking up, this, this, this. We need people to be in position everywhere of winning position because we never know when we need each other. That's why they I mean, say that's how I look at it. That's why they say you treat the janitor the same respect you treat the CEO. You never know who's going to end up where they're going to be. <laughs> you ain't lying. And, 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 and Spin, you ever did a strip club? What's the most... Do you get tips in strip clubs like this? The bottle girls who made 20000 at night or whatever. Do they ever turn around and be like, yo, Spin King, uh, here you go. Yeah, but I don't accept it. I just tell them, I see money, go ahead, do your thing. Or... I give it to the other DJs that went on before or after. That's what I'll do. Or I'll give it to the MC who's like calling the girls through the whole night. I don't take the money personally. You you you're not on that shit. No. That's, yeah, I'm the same way. You know, and also, uh, ninety out of a hundred times I pay the bill for dinner, no matter where the fuck I'm at, and and, and I might be the brokest guy in the table. Speaking well, of I dinner, just me feel and, like speaking of, speaking of dinner, me and Joe ate a fish the size of a dolphin. <laughs> you know, Uncle Murder came over and he said, yo, the fucking fish was a mile long. That shit was crazy, right? That was a crazy dinner. But it was it, it was a great thing. And your brother, he's such a stand-up guy. You know, when you guys had Club Lust in Lust Brooklyn, very I remember lucky. when I did the collection for Puerto Rico with the hurricane. Mm -hmm. You guys collected like an 18 wheeler full of waters and stuff for Puerto Rico and and what was that like? And and Club Lust, y'all owned Club Lust, right? Yeah. yeah. I was there for the Puerto Rican drive when we did it for the, the whole week. Yo, you guys came through major. I'm telling everybody right now, they came through. Y'all did like an 18 wheeler full of stuff mm -hmm. uh out of Brooklyn. Um, and that was like one of the most uh that was like a spot in the hip hop culture I would say, in New York I would City. Say a lot of anybody been to Lust in Brooklyn, besides it being my brother's spot, I was there. All the DJs from New York out of town been there. All the artists been there. Everybody from Rihanna to 50 to Joe to Mayweather, everybody's been there. Kanye, Travis, everybody's been there. It was just a spot where it was love, if that makes sense to you. It was never no issues in there. It was never no, you know, we going in there looking for this person. It was. You, you pull up Joe, line down the block. But if you Joe, you pull in the garage, Grand Theft Auto style, you go inside, you come through the side, and you go up to and have a good time. Yeah, I remember I went in there one night, 
uh, I think it was uh, don't you uh, a hey, boogie, a hey, boogie's uh right hand man. Yeah, and so those guys have always before they got signed. They was since I met them, they've been classy guys, amazing guys. Shout the since hybrid, I yeah. met them. So it, it was Don's birthday. He was like, yo, Crack, I want you to come up in here and make a movie with me. Right? So um, I go up in there. We just start throwing money. We just It's just really nothing to talk about. I go on there. I don't want to say how much. I throw the big shit on there. They got the big. I mean, these girls must have been the happiest chicks in the universe of history. And anybody who saw me, Probably said, yo, this guy fat Joe don't give a fuck. Cause I yeah. came out of respect for the young boy. Mm -hmm. And I was really wasn't there for nothing else. Like the strip club to me, no disrespect, really ain't fat Joe scene. Like I don't, I don't, you know, I never like looking at the girls naked and and, 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 and can't do nothing. Like they, to me, it's been a sucker's bet the whole time, right? But it's all love. I know people love it. It's a culture, it is a way of life. But I go in there for Don Q because he's my little brother from the Bronx. He said, let's make a movie. Now, when it, we made a fucking movie. We typhooned that bitch. I was there. And by the time you turn around, <laughs> Fat Joe's out. You know what I'm saying? He just gone. The so money you know, goes I want you to know I came in here. <laughs> yeah, it was like I came here really for my, for, for my little man, the young boy, make a movie, BX stand up, and then I'm out of there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and so, has ever been nice and you sitting there and guys are throwing their money and you, have you ever thought about that? Like, have you ever said, like, these motherfuckers really throwing all their money at these chicks? I, like, I, listen, I've seen a girl's birthday, a man come through, throw, bring out the trip, literally a trophy case, 40000 and I'm like, damn, bro, like, I get it. The strip club scene, you gotta throw money, promote the record, promote Artist-wise, I get it why artists do it. So is it part of the promotion? People going there to promote shit? Pe people don't understand this. Throwing the money is promoting. Yes, 100%. Because I'm going to tell you something. In Lust, a lot of artists broke through Lust. Uh, Fetty broke through Lust. Designer broke through Lust. Boogie broke through Lust. Um, I'm missing a couple people. A lot of New York artists broke through Lust. First time I heard Bobby Shmurda and Rowdy came through Lust 150 deep, and they went crazy, and they shook the floor. Like, I still had the video the first time Bobby Smurda Hot Nigga got played in Lust and it really shook the room. So, some some labels don't like when I say this, but bartenders are the new A&Rs. And I mean this in every most respectful way, but that is the truth. If then you going to give them the A&R role too? I'm going to tell you why. If an A&R play a new song in a room of, like, bosses, CEOs, it's going to go somewhere. If one of these bartenders with a million followers post a song in their story, it's going to get more Shazams off that story than it did in that A&R room. That's just my opinion. Interesting. I, I agree with that, too. If if they all played it, it would, it would be a... a but I thought you meant, like, when they stripping in the clubs, they hear so much music that they react to the new song that they, they almost let you know what's hot. I, I yeah, think strip is... Because if you hear a song four or five times in a strip club, right, and you see the same section throwing the money, but they don't know what's throwing the money, you're like, yo, what song? You're going to pay attention to the record. That's what the money's doing. Getting Bro, I could, t I could connect uh, New Jack City when the chick was dancing for Nino Brown to I Want to Sex You Up. And I remember I went one time to ATL, and there was this chick. She was dancing to some Scarface shit. I might have ran to the DJ and ask him, yo, what's that record? And I remember driving back to New York from the ATL playing that shit a hundred times because it was like, damn, the way she was doing that record, the, the way she was doing that record had me, you know, so I, I thought you meant it that way. I agree with it that way. Yeah. Um, What made you get into producing and, and putting out records? And tell us, what is your biggest records? Um, my biggest record today would be Thomas with A Boogie and um, Adult Swim with Tyga and Jeremiah Asap Berg. I came into music because I was like 17, 18. My oldest brother used to do like the local stuff, Sweet 16s, the proms. And then I was home 
so so eleven star both went to college. I didn't really have nothing to do. My brothers left and they left the equipment. So I just started playing around with it. And then um I started doing like my own podcast from home since I was eighteen, not ten years ago. I'm twenty eight now. So back then I was doing it, have people like listen to me while doing their homework. And then I started throwing my own parties because I wasn't allowed in the club. So I started renting out VFWs. I got kicked out of them. Then I started renting hotel ballroom, got kicked out of them. Then I got then I started Scream Tour. And I was on the road for like two years. Then when I came back home, I was old enough to get in the club. So I did it kind of backwards. I entered the concerts before I entered the clubs. That's crazy because I know people don't believe me. <laughs> Yo, you know, Matt Joe, he got too many stories. You know, is he lying? Is he telling the truth? But um, similar to you, right? Uh, uh, when I came out, Flojo, I actually stopped hustling to rap and took a huge pay cut. But the only reason I'm here is because I changed my life. So Flojo went number one, but at the time, all we was getting was like $500 a show. And so I was doing three spots in one night. Jersey, Connecticut, New York, every night, like trying to run it up, right? And then when I didn't have shows, I used to throw parties at the Fever. And similar to you, I used to throw parties underground spots that had no license, that had whatever. Bro, as long as I went home with like a G1500, I was throwing parties all over asking my, my, my friends that were artists, Big Al, rest in peace, and, and everybody to come through and, and video music box, right? And then we started Memorial Weekend in Miami, right? The Terror Squad along with Butterfuco out here. We set this bitch off. So when the whole planet Earth comes to Miami to this day because of Memorial Weekend, we had a monopoly. We had all three of the biggest clubs. And this is how, uh, what's my man's name? Big Phil and and, and what's his partner? Atlanta. Big Phil and his partner. Fat Phil and his partner. What's it? Uh, Mike. 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 This is where they started in the little club. So, so Club Amnesia, Club Mansion, Cameo, that was all our shit. So Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we throwing Jeezy here, Buster here, Fab here, Fat Joe here, Cali here. This We running it up Memorial Weekend. Then we had a, 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 a day party in the pool party in the shell one that was like, the who's who was in that motherfucker. How like, long ago was this? this? We started it. Maybe like uh, 15 years ago or whatever. There was shit happening. Memorial weekend before we started the shit. And so we throw in this party. The pool party was even better because uh, it wasn't that expensive to rent that. And then all the bar money was like ours. Like, you know, we were splitting the bar money with the... It was disgusting, right? But... We set that bitch off out here. So now, you know, it went and then, so Phil and Mike Gardner used to throw parties in Little Club Bed, but Club Bed only fit like 200 people. We was doing the biggest shit. And then they went and got with Dave Gruffin and blew the fuck up. These are facts, you know? Um, and, and so I always been a hustler. I gotta get money. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I had to figure out how to get the bag in different ways. And so I understand what you're saying when you was like, I got to throw a party. You know, shout out my man, the Sketchy. Uh, the Sketchy, too, was throwing the teen parties. And then, you know, he got big uptown. And now he, he hit me yesterday. He got a new chain on. He's like, oh, yeah. he got the, you know, he got that nigga, like, he the, wanna, the around his neck. He don't know how to Oh, act. he want to stunt bad. Like, bad. And, um, and so... You come up, you put out these records, and these records really go. Timeless is a, is a classic A Boogie record. Yeah, double platinum on his way to triple platinum. All the way up just went triple platinum. It's like, that, is, that ain't easy things. Nah. You, you know, and people, I try to tell people, I was telling my brother the mayor today, I said, yo, listen, man, the music business is almost like making a miracle. There's people 
making music, 10 million people making music, the chance of you making a hit is close to none. And so you got to make a miracle, a hit yeah. that's a miracle, right? Let alone do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Uh, that's like, um, it's almost impossible. And yeah. so we got to respect the Drakes, the, the Ja Rules, the, all, these guys who just kept, the Khaleds that keep putting out hits. You, you do not know how impossible this shit is. It is. And, and then let alone, so I look at any other business, because I dream big, right? So I, I, I came, I started rapping. I was, I was the realest. I still am the realest. I'm not going to lie to you. And, but my music wasn't as good as it is now. I was a work in progress. And so guys like Nas and Jay-Z and Snoop and these guys, they was all like way better than me. I used to look at them like, oh my God, these guys, they just, and then I just kept getting better and better and better. Right? And so, um, but when I knew I wasn't better than them and I started do, making my albums, I would look at these guys. I would have a poster of Jay-Z, poster of Nas, poster of Snoop and Jay, and be like, yo, I'm going to kill these dudes. I'm, I'm going to rip them down and start making my albums. And, and so I was crazy enough to lie to myself and tell myself, you better than these guys. And that's the only reason I'm here to this day, right? Yeah. And so when I look at, like, my sneaker stores, for the brown and black community, we're better than everybody. It, it, it's just the truth. And so when I sit down and I sit down with my crew and I tell them, yo, this is what we're going to do. We got two stores. We're going to wind up owning 10 stores. Our stores are going to be better than every other store. We're going to look out for the people. It's going to be the fly shit. We're going to make our own apparel. We're going to go overseas to get it. We're going to this and this and that. And my crew, everybody might not think as aggressive as I think. But I'm like, yo, bro, I made it in a business where you got to make a fucking miracle to make a hit. We got money. We got stores. We got the branding. Like, what's going to stop especially, us? Especially in today's age when everybody's popping up left and right. Like, they coming and going. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm just saying, we, I, sneaker business, um, our brand is so strong. I'm like, why couldn't we be the next Foot Locker? Why couldn't, but Flyer, why can't we be the next Kiss? Why can't we? I don't believe in not believing. I believe in believing. And so that's what I mean by when you are, uh, you making your music. I'm sure when you said, yo, I'm going to make music. They all, you try to be Cali, you try to be Clue. You try, you know, and, I, get, I, get, I get that all the time. And what I say is those guys open the doors for me to be able to make music and be able to think that it's possible. So I pay respect to the Clue, the Khaled, the Flex, to everybody who started the mixtapes and the making music. Look how it took off for them. So why can't it take off for me? And the thing is, I started at a younger age, so I feel I have a slight advantage of them, not them, but other people. So I dream, the same way you dream big, I dream big. I remember somebody told me that's not going to work. I, I, I never even told the story. That Thomas record, I went to Boogie's house. I said, yo, bro, I got this beat. We went to the studio, played it, and he, that, that was Thomas. It was one beat I played. I didn't play 15 beats. I didn't play three beats. I played one beat. And Thomas, and the Thomas, and the And, and, and that was it. And he recorded it right there. And we went to the club. We heard it. You know, you, when you record it, you go to the club, you're in the club. Oh, the, all right, it's going to go. And thank God for all the fans' support, and it went. And we got a couple more in the snaps we about to drop. I just dropped my new single with um, OT Genesis and Fabio Foreign. We're about to shoot the video for that, and then I'm keeping the music coming. And those are, those are winners right there, Fabio Foreign and, and OT, OT Genesis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, OT don't miss. No. Nah. Fabio don't you miss. What I, wanted to, what I like doing music, Joe, is I like to bring people together that haven't been together. I made Fabio get on a 96 BPM beat when he's used to the drill. So we added a little bit of drill with OT's bounce, and that's with the record. So if you haven't heard it, it's called I Got Bitches featuring OT Jazz Fabio 4 and the video is on the way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, 
We outside. How do you have bitches, outside. Spin King? Do you, Joe, we outside. Do you, yo, Spin King, do you have, and I never asked nobody this, but you're such a nice guy. Do you have a girlfriend? No. Nah. And so I'm, you I'm, prefer I'm, to stay I'm single? So outside, I feel like I'm homeless. Say that again, I didn't hear that. I'm so outside, I feel like I'm homeless. So you don't want a girlfriend? I can't right now, you know what I'm saying? It's not easy dealing with our lifestyle, you know, shout out to like you, bro, and white beats, and they're able to understand, but my job right now during this pandemic is to elevate to the next level, and that's what I want to do. I don't have time right now to focus on a relationship and kind of deal with that right now. So my, I'm focused on my career and my family, and that's what I'm focused on. Man, yo, let me tell you something. You're a smart man. <laughs> and and I'm going to back to where we was talking about um, I'm so home. I'm so outside. I'm homeless. Damn, I just caught that line. Now, I, I need to put that in the verse, man. Uh, and so, uh, not making fun of homeless people at all, but uh, I think you're right. And I believe that 30, 30 years old to 40 years old is where you, you are way mature, right? But for everybody else watching who are into business, who want to be an entrepreneurs, right? 30 to 40 years old should be the years you take life very serious. And if you're going to open a business and be an entrepreneur or invest or do whatever your dreams are, I think you do it from 30 to 40. Once you're 40, you should be set up financially where you can enjoy your life, still run your empire, but enjoy your life from 40 on. America has told people, work 45 years, and when you're 70, 80 years old, which nobody even gets to 70, 80 no more, mm -hmm. that's when you retire and you have fun. And, and their version of fun is you work your whole life, you got money, you never spent it, you go on a fucking cruise and eat all day or something. Like, I don't know. So I think a serious thing that everybody should take serious watching this show is 30 to 40 years old is when any entrepreneur, anybody out there should take life serious. Own a business, get your shit together so you can actually enjoy your success. When you're 40, you're still young. You can have fun. You can do whatever you want. Know what I'm saying? That, that's very important to start early. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> I started that. I ain't gonna lie, Joe. I started that already. So by that time, I feel like I'm 35. I'm trying to meet your 40 at 35. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And, and, and everybody needs to do that. So sometimes I, I know I don't really got to give you the speech. And, and I'm, I'm giving it to people, young no, brothers that's listening and sisters. So the way I set it up is you're 30 to 40. I made it my 25 to 35. Smartest guy in the world. Smartest guy in the world, and 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 you gotta, and and you gotta do that, man, because they gotta start early. Uh, having a job is cool, but working for somebody else is not really it. And when you're a worker, they can come fire you at any point. You know, I you know, so I believe in being an entrepreneur, and uh, I believe it was yesterday I did this business podcast, the Charlemagne's behind two brothers from the Bronx. I really got to find that name because it was a really, really interesting. Oh, um, uh, Demetrius and Demario. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Great guys. Yeah. Great guys. So I did that thing and I, and, and I was just telling them, you know, we were talking about business and all that. And I was just like, yo, bro, like, you know, at the end of the day, you got to work for yourself. I don't care if it's selling oranges on the corner. I don't care if it's selling batteries. I don't care what it is. But you, you, you know, you're expendable as a worker, and and so people need to understand that. No, not these is a mural. These is a murals are, are from the Bronx. They they legends. No, it was not these is a mural. It was who's the guys you said? I said I, that's what I said. That's what I said. No, it wasn't these is a mural. It was it was two other guys from the Bronx that have a business uh podcast. Um, smart guys, you know. My brother Spin King, let me, uh, before we leave, let me ask you a question I ask everybody. 
Uh, Who's on your top five, dead or alive? Oh, uh, man. Um, top five, dead or alive. Did anybody ever ask you, who's your top five, dead or alive? Of course they've asked me. And who you, um, who you say? <laughs> nah, man. Uh, I got the mic my, today. My, 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 my personal top five that are alive is Hove, Biggie, and Five. Hove and Biggie. And Fifth. That's three. Oh, Hove, Biggie, Five, Jada, and uh, Fab. That's a great five. You know, uh, Fab don't get the props he deserves. He's been in the game for over 20 years. He's smooth as a motherfucker. He can drop a hit when he wants. His albums be incredible. Um, and so I like that you put him in your top five. Everybody else, I've heard, but Fab is a, is a good thing. Yo, Spin, thanks for coming on the show, my brother. You God bless you. Send Star my love. Nothing but love. And, and I remember they said, you was wearing Fugazi clothes. They full of <laughs> shit. They hate us. The next day, I seen you in a Fendi trench coat down to your fucking ankles, icy as fuck. You know, these guys, man, they try to hate on They don't want to see you man. win, Joe. They don't want to <gasps> see you win, Joe. <laughs> Yo. We timeless, Yo. Joe, forever. <laughs> we timeless forever, Joe. God bless you, my brother, man. Woo! Damn, man, I love that. Young boy stunt. Young boy move that dope. Young nigga move that dope. Huh? Young boy move that dope. Huh? Young boy move that dope. Smart guy. He's been a boss since I met him. He's only 28. Impressive. But you can do that. At 28, you can do that. At 30, you can do that. I don't know what you're waiting for. You want to get old to get money? You can do that, bro. And so you got to start thinking out the box. Drop that. My brother Drop. Hovain, what's up? You can think out the box. You can do that. I meet billionaires all the time that grew up dead broke. And all they did was follow their dreams and believe in it. And it didn't take Harvard. It didn't take Yale. In fact, not trying to hype it up or, or say the wrong thing. Oye, dia, Pepe, que pasa? Say the wrong thing. But um, I have a friend, very serious friend, and she is, she owns a huge company, huge, makes hundreds of millions a year. And so she was invited to an island. I might have told you this a while back. She was invited to the Richard Branson's Island for the 100 most uh, biggest entrepreneurs. And so she sit down in the, in the table with 100. These guys are all billionaires, like sitting around at the table. And, um, and they all get to talking. And she said about, she said, yo, in the sketch, hey, she said around 98 of them said they dropped out of high school of billionaires, entrepreneurs, self-made people. Now, I am not telling you to quit school. Don't do that to your parents. Don't do that to yourself. Education is great. But it's not like school teaches you how to get that other bag. It just doesn't. Something you got to learn on the job, while on the job. I might be telling y'all too much shit, man. I might be giving you too much, uh, uh, too much game shit. You motherfucker want to give you game, they ain't got a dollar. I'm telling you some shit. Let me give him a joke for a moment. I mean, we can do a show like this where you play records and I can give him more. Come on. Because I got stories to everything, right? We can actually do some shit like this. Look, Onyx first came out. I'm at Club 2000. 
is about 3,000 people in there. The club is really supposed to hold 500 people, meaning the wall is sweating. The walls are sweating, right? People are standing in place. I think Frontmaster Flex was DJing that night. Everything was peaceful. Everybody was having a good time. This is when Onyx first came out. They were late. They arrived at maybe 3 o'clock, 3.20 in the morning. Everybody's chilling, wait to see this new group, Onyx, right? So now, all of a sudden, they turn on the music, and it goes, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, dead. Pick them up, pick them up. One shot, two guns, three guns, four. It's all about Onyx. It's time to get live. Lot, yo, the whole club start hitting each other with chairs, with bottles. The whole club turned into a riot. They never got to perform. They were so small. They had these big security guards, threw them on their shoulders, and ran out. And I mean, the club was so peaceful to three in the morning, the minute they came on, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, dead. One gun, two gun, three gun, Onyx! The whole club went into a fucking riot, bro. That's the Joker moment. You can continue. Nah, you know what, Joe? This is sir. This is this is this is this feel right here. <laughs> Talk about this one. Hey, so. down with the man. Yo, <laughs> Yo Joe. And that's it. And that's and let me tell you. <laughs> and that's and that record right there is the wild card. <laughs> in a versus battle. That record right there is a wild card in a versus battle. Be very careful who want to go against Fat Joe in a versus and pull out some street shit because that's going to just stomp on them. On another level. If you ever get in a versus, Joe, I think it's going to happen. When, 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 you know, when, when the money get right, Yo, Joe, if you have a versus, about money, right? it's about the right opponent. No, for sure. Yo, if you have a versus, right? New version of this record. And then you do your remix of the record, right? Then you should mix that in with my remix of the record. Huh? Huh? This, you were saying something? I, I, I don't even want to say nothing now. I don't even want to say nothing now. I mean, the first time I ever performed when my you, lifestyle was at a Funk Flex car show. I came out, it was only like a week old, and the place went bananas. <coughs> and uh, but this record you about to play, it got to be the last one. But let it ride, let it fly, let it fly. Let it fly, let it fly. It's <laughs> Different. Different tools, Joe. You know we really Different did tools. that. Really, shout out Cool and Dre, uh, exclusive, infrared. That's uh, mean. And and I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought I thought that was it. I thought that was gonna be the biggest, last Fat Joe anthem. Cause it's cause you know we got the lean backs, we got the all the way ups, we got the make it rings, we got. Uh, the What's Loves, the the another rounds with with, with Chris Brown. We got make it rain. To make it, we got too much shit. To, you know, and but then, what I always say, Joe, the key to life is consistency, right? I you know I, I I'm the remix king because of the consistency, and you do what you do because of the consistency. Mm. Chill, chill, Yo, chill, Ted. chill, chill. Yo, Ted, let me explain to the people out there. <laughs> You drop a record, it becomes a hit, and months later you make a remix. Yes, sir. Uh, in this case, we dropped the record four days ago, and you already made a remix. This is just, premeditated murder. I'm just letting you know it's there. <laughs> Test move, straight face. You Yo, remember? Test move, remember, I love you. Remember. Thank you for what you do for us. One. Every Friday, 
I'm waiting on the new checks to drop to send you a new wire. Come on, man. Wire there. Okay, my brother, I'm here. Love Hello, you, boy. my brother. Stay up. Today you yeah, outdid yourself. One love, Ted. Yes, sir. So there you have it. It's time. Yo, Nigel, I see you, New York Giant, on the check-in. Michael Mad on the check-in. I mean, it's the biggest show in the game, man. They trying to act like this shit ain't the biggest. And so, um, and so, this is the biggest show in the land. Thank you. Um, I'll see you on Monday. I'm about to take another COVID test, my 26,000th one. Uh, I see you, Nigel. I see you, Nigel. I see you, Mayor. I see Raul. Better believe it. It's the biggest, biggest in the land. And so, yo, everybody, put God first. Like I always say, let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Stay in the game. You never know. Stay in the game. You never know. And trust in God through tough times and through good times. Believe in God. And he's going to guide you through. Peace, y'all. It's the biggest in the game.